In this video, we'll find the expression for relative refractive index, and we'll do that with the help of a numerical. So let's say we've been given this refractive index of glass, refractive index of water, and we are asked to find what's the refractive index of glass with respect to water. Now, before we begin, let's just quickly recall what refractive index was. Remember that refractive index is a number that tells you how slow light is traveling in one medium compared to some reference medium. So this number helps us find out what's the speed of light in a particular medium. So I like to think of it mathematically if you write it, if refractive index of some medium is given as n, then it tells us that the speed of light in that medium is the speed of light in the reference divided by n. It's n times slower compared to the speed of light in that reference. And if that reference medium is not mentioned, like over here, then we'll always treat it to be vacuum. Okay, so for over here it would be, this tells us that for example, speed of light in glass is speed of light in vacuum divided by 1.5. Same is the case over here. And if the reference medium is mentioned, for example over here water is mentioned, then over here, with the here on the numerator, there'll be speed of light in water. Okay, and if this is not clear to you, then we've discussed a lot about this in a previous video, so it'll be a great idea to go back, watch that video first, and then come back over here. All right, so with this, Let's start, let's start finding this. So we have to find what this number is. So let me just write that down. N, G of W is what we want to find. And since I don't want to keep writing N, G, W all the time, let me just call this as something. I'll call this as X, okay? And we'll start with the definition. If this number is X, what does that mean? This, this means speed of light in glass, speed of light in glass, is speed of light in water, speed of light in water, divided by x. Make sense? I'm using the same definition, divided by x. And since I want to find what x is, I'm going to rearrange this. So we'll write, we can write this as x equals v of w divided by v of g. And so to figure out what x is, I need to know what the speed of light in water is, and I need to know what the speed of light in glass is. And can we figure that out is the question. And the answer is yes, we can, because I know what's the refractive index of glass. So I can use the same definition and figure out this speed. And similarly, I can find using this number what this speed is, okay? So great idea to pause the video now and see if you can solve this further yourself. All right, let's do this. So let me continue that over here. So x will be equal to Speed of light in water. Well, speed of light in water is speed of light in vacuum, because the reference here is vacuum, and that we usually refer to as C, divided by 1.33. This will be the speed of light in water. Divided by speed of light in glass, again, using the same definition, is the speed of light in vacuum, speed of light in vacuum, divided by 1.5. And we are pretty much done with the physics over here. All we have to do now is solve this fraction. Since there is a fraction over a fraction, I like to do it this way. I'm gonna write the numerator as it is. C divided by 1.33 multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator, okay? C is 1.5 reciprocal of the denominator. This always avoids, well, no, I, I, it, it helps me avoid confusion. See what I'm doing basically is if, if I have like three divided by five, we can always write that as three into the reciprocal of the denominator, isn't it? That's the same thing I'm doing over here. So now that we have this, notice that the C cancels out, C divided by C is just one. And therefore, our answer is 1.5 divided by 1.33. So that's if we just have to divide this. And since I don't wanna divide, I'm just gonna go down and get my calculator. Uh, there it is. So 1.5 divided by 1.33, and voila, there it is, 1.127. I'll approximate it as 1.13. Oh yeah, there it is. So this is gonna be equal to 1.13, and there is our answer. That's the refractive index of glass, x is that, refractive index of glass with respect to water. So this number tells us that speed of light in glass is speed of light in water divided by this number. It's that much slower in glass. 
All right, let's see if we can generalize this. Can we write a general expression for um, NGW in terms of NG and NW? Well, let's see, well, let's, let's look at what we calculated. X is, is that re refractive index, let's get the color right, refractive index of glass with respect to water. And notice that that is equal to C divided by 1.33. Well, what's 1.33? Hey, that's the refractive index of water with respect to vacuum. And what's this 1.5? That's the refractive index of glass with respect to vacuum. So you see what we got eventually? We eventually got it as 1.5, which is NG. So let me just write that down. I'm just writing this down in terms of these variables. So we got this as NG divided by NW. NW. And notice that is our general expression. We can treat this as a general expression now. Okay? So what we see is that the refractive index of glass with respect to water is equal to refractive index of glass divided by refractive index of water. So if we just remember this expression, then we can solve problems like this in one step. And you know, I, I actually like to remember this because I like to think of it this way. See, whenever we have glass with respect to water, the refractive index of glass comes on the top and the refractive index of water comes in the bottom. So if I were to write this in more general terms, I'll, I'll generalize it even more. So if it was given in general, what is refractive index of medium one, some medium one, with respect to some other medium two, we can write this as refractive index of medium one with respect to vacuum, divided by refractive index of medium two. I'm dividing by medium two because it's with respect to medium two. So we can think of this as the general formula that connects the relative refractive index. This is the relative refractive index, right? Whenever second medium is not vacuum, it's relative, with absolute refractive index. Notice when the second medium is vac uh, vacuum, we usually call it as absolute value. So that's the connection. And before we wind up, I just want to go a little bit deeper to show you even more generalized result, all right? So just, just stay with me and you'll get this. Imagine we were not given the refractive indices with respect to vacuum. Imagine we were given with respect to some other medium. These two values were with respect to some other medium. I'll show you that this formula still works, okay? This expression still works. So let's say this was given with respect to oil both of these were given with respect to oil and not and not vacuum. And yes, of course, these numbers will change, but let's not worry about the numbers. Then when we solve this, till here, everything would still be the same. And while substituting the speed of light in water, instead of C in the numerator, we would have speed of light in oil in the numerator, isn't it? Because our reference medium is oil. And the same thing would have happened over here. It, there would be speed of light in oil in the numerator. And notice when we would have calculated, those two anyways cancel out. So do you see that regardless of which reference medium we use over here, they will get canceled out when you're calculating their relative refractive indices. Which means even if this was, even if this was with respect to oil, this would number would still work. Okay, so long story, short, uh, long story short, what I'm trying to tell you is, if you know refractive indices of two media with respect to some other common medium, say let's call it as X, um, or yeah, some common medium X, then if you divide them, you will calculate what the refractive index of one medium is with respect to another medium. This is a generalized result. And so you see, if you remember this, then problems like this can be solved with ease, with just one or two steps. And of course, if you ever forget this, no problem, you just go back to your definition, and from there, we can always derive this.